from a compilation of my previously written material beginning as early as the 1970s. The Golden Taya allotments are the areas of Earth's surface which will be ascending at the period of time referred to as Light Principle 40 or LP40. According to Thoth, those whom we call the Sunbow Clan, also known as the Kachina of the Hopi prophecy, were responsible for these decisions. They were master builders sent from the Confederation of Stars, known as Orion, but primarily they came from the Blue Star Rigel. This occurred after the first fall of heaven prior to the end of the Hyperborean epoch, which resulted in the ascension of a portion of Atlantis known as the Holy Isle of Ruta at the final cataclysm that destroyed the remaining continent. The Sunbow was assigned by the Aeneid, Council of Nine Seraphimic Intelligences, to determine the present future consciousness vectors of Earth and assign light ascension matrices for specific sacred land areas under the mandate of the violet flame. It was understood that not all of Earth would be viable for translation at the time of LP40. The regions containing certain light codes were those to be appropriated back to the Metatronic full light spiral at the time of ascension. The rest of the Earth would be given up to the entropy of the fallen elements. There was an archangelic decree given that a mandate should be established for this return to grace which the universes were moving through. You must understand that the Earth's plight is of an inner design as part of a greater universal return home. The universal mandate is that of the violet flame. The Earth's role is given several sub-mandates under the violet flame. One of these mandates is the Golden Taya, which concerns the allotment of certain light-encoded areas for the LP40 ascension. The first step in this process involves their transfer from Nephilimic guardianship to Solarian guardianship under the authority of the Wheels of Fire containing various Merkaba groups, such as Chariot of the Sun. Now, Chariot of the Sun is Thos Merkaba. They work, I might say, under them, at, under his authority, and their souls involved in that Merkaba. Thoth uses the word Nephilim in a broader context than just one tribe of human-like beings. The Nephilim are basically those who originally broke with the Unimanity Pact among equilibrium worlds. So they are human-like, they have human genetics, but they are not what he considers star kindred because they do not conform to that code. In other words, they march to a different drummer and uh, that drumming is outside the uh, spiritual code of the greater humanity. The greater spiritual Solarius is the third eye of the source of all things. All creation is composed of rays from the Solarius throughout all the three ultra universes and many cosmic universes within all dimensions and interdimensions in every plane of thought, reason, or comprehension. Now, the Solarians represent the many stellar races, basically what we would call, um, we would relate to as human, as compared to angelic or devic souls. Their programs would include generating avatars, messiahs, religions, nations, and culture frames across time. I created a video on the new avatars and Solarians, and I will put a link to that video in the information box below. At the time of the Earth's creation, it was known that the fallen lords, including the incarnating Nephilim, would enter the Earth's spectrum and claim guardianship over the basis elemental state. 
This was allowed by the God's source as part of a larger process designed to create separation in order to redesign the fragments of self back into unity. One might even call this karma, if you were looking at it in a very dimensional way. The higher regions, including the Metatronic Gate, would remain with the guardianship of the Solarians. It was determined within the sub-mandate of the Golden Taya guardianship that even the elemental substance known as your world, meaning this planet, would be turned over to the Solarians prior to LP-40 ascension. This must be accomplished in order for these Golden Taya areas to ascend through the Metatronic Gate at that time. We are now in that time when the Solarians which includes us, those who are spiritually aware, maybe not perfect, but we have our awareness and our dedication. So those of us and the star kindred and inner earth kindred, the solarian energy that originally came through this vessel of light and is gathering other star kindred beings, we now are in a position to emancipate the lower frequencies and hold the torch high for our future world system. To continue with Thoth, the Golden Taya are the major ascension centers of the planet. These are the areas that are necessary to come with us in energetic coding in order to create the new Earth Star of World System 2. It is going to be designed from that template. And of course, we will be carrying the planetary genius from the center of the Earth, another topic. Now, Thoth has told me that we will be on these Golden Taya land areas at the time that we go through the process of Light Principle 40, the ascension process, the final part of it. This doesn't mean that you have to run out and find one. <laughs> you simply will be there. If your frequency is, you're determining your, your destiny by your frequency, then you will be in one of these golden Taya areas. Some of these Taya's are very small, uh, a few acres wide maybe. Uh, most of them are much larger, but there are situations, Thoth has told me, where some particular land area might be, I don't know, 25 acres in the midst of nothing else is going for miles and miles. <laughs> and so that little piece would be part of it. So, you know, and then there are much bigger pieces as well. So it's not about worrying about, oh my gosh, how am I going to find a golden tie so I can ascend? And it's like part of your program of light will place you there. It all, all comes down to your inner decision to be a part of this process, not because of you, you heard Thoth talk about it or using this language. This comes from the inner being. As I said, the dairy farmers and the, and the um, you know, high execs or anybody who is part of the spiritual condition of feeling this in frequency, not a religion, not a belief system, will be where they need to be at that time. But they need to make the right decisions along the way. That means being open to receiving that frequency in, in various modalities so that it leads you there. At this point in the transmission that I'm reading to you here from, the question was posed, do all the golden taya link to form a large temple structure or are they simply nodal points connected on a grid? The response is, these lands form the Grand Templaric. Their etheric counterpart is the Templemar complex. That's what we discussed in part two of this series. And so now let us look at the, the chakras, the temples, the nodes, all of these things Thoth calls them, of this ascension grid. The first is the base or Kundalini center. This is the Hawaiian Islands, 
the center point being the large island Hawaii. This is what we call the royal point of the present Earth. With the pole shift, the royal point becomes Rennes-le-Chateau, France. So even though we discussed the royal point, and I didn't bring this up about Rennes-le-Chateau, I didn't want to you know, confuse you at the time, but these things will shift. But when it does shift, we'll be well along the way of all these energies rising up from the royal point, which we discussed in, in um, the first part of the series. And as the poles shift, that skin will move to Rinle Chateau. But that is way, way in the future. So these chakras are gonna start changing positions. I don't even know, you know, if we'll be on the planet then. I'm not exactly sure. So I don't put too much emphasis because Thoth has not on this shifting of all these chakras. Let's look at where they are now because now is where it's at, okay? So the uh, we know the royal point is in the current Hawaiian island. The second chakra of the ascension grid, navel center, Rennes Chateau region. France, center point being the seed chamber. Now the seed chamber is something that's mentioned in a book called Genesis, the first book of Revelations by David Wood for the approximate seed chamber location. Thoth took this information that I read and developed it into quite a topic. But for now, we're just going to say that the seed point is the, or the seed chamber, is the center point for the navel center. And this is in the Rennes Chateau region. Third, solar plexus center. Now this is the Mogollon Rim region and it includes Sedona. This is of Arizona, of course. The center point is on the Mogollon Rim. If you will recall from this series, in part two, the Mogollon Rim plays a major role in the Temple of Mar. Then there is the fourth heart center, Grand Tetons region of Wyoming, and the center point is within the Tetons. The fifth is the throat center, Ayers Rock region, Australia. Center point, Ayers Rock. The sixth is the Brow Center, Glastonbury, the Crystal Isle region of England. The center point is Tor Hill. Now Tor Hill is where the suspended body of Torhanna lies in her sarcophagus. And Torhanna was later incarnated as the Virgin Mary. Of course, I have a video on that. <laughs> and then we come to the crown center, the seventh chakra, which is the San Luis Valley in Colorado. And the center point is the Crestone Baca area and really also includes the sand dunes. Now we have the next two chakras, which will open for the Earth just prior to LP40. These are the two Metatronic pillars named here as Osiris and Isis. So the eighth is the Osiris. This is the Dead Sea, Mount Sinai region of the Middle East, the center point near the Dead Sea. And the ninth is Isis Center, Easter Island region of the Pacific Ocean. The center point is Easter Island. There are three more ascension gates oriented to the capstone of the Metatronic Temple. The tenth is the Sheba Gate, Ethiopia, in region not far from Addis Ababa, center point not clearly defined on a map. 
the 11th Thunderbird Gate, Alaska, region of Denali, and Montuska Valley, center point near Denali. And the 12th, the Zion Gate, Zion National Park region of Utah. The center point is the Great White Throne. It is important to understand that these areas perform specific grid functions for the entire Golden Taya Ascension Dynamic. At the time of LP40, a soul in one of these regions listed as Ascension Gates will not be more ascended than a soul in any other Golden Tie area. Souls in the Ascension Gate areas will, however, undergo specific experiences unique to the Gate's function prior to LP40 and during the LP40 lifting process. At this point in the transmission, the question was posed, are there any procedures that individuals living within the Golden Taya areas can utilize to facilitate the higher etheric work being done to prepare these areas for LP40 or to link the vibration of that area to others? Thoth responds, Souls in the Golden Tire regions would do best to focus primarily on their heart ascension and enjoin this personal energetic with those in their immediate consciousness field. There will be certain light workers, and now Thoth prefers to call them light bearers, within these golden sections that will be called upon to perform specific functions such as anchoring the Templomar grids, earth healing, etc. Linking with other areas would fall within whatever specific light service was being given. It would be difficult to correctly give an overall outline for this work as each Golden Taya area calls forth different functions and directives. Many souls will enter these Golden Taya allotments with their main purpose being to anchor Metatronic light there. Now, Thoth becomes more specific the closer we come to the actual Light Principle 40. And so in these most recent years, he's spoken about, you know, the anchoring of the arcs of light, uh, the uh, areas here where we have sustainable living, but also uh, the frequency that is needed to connect the higher spectrum with these um, future worlds that we are creating within the New Earth Star. Now in the 1990s, when this message was delivered to me, I kind of pressed him for a window in which the time would be that we actually ascend the Light Principle 40. And he said that he didn't wish to really put that into the planetary consciousness for one thing, but the other was, that it would change. Well, he didn't say it positively would change, but very likely. However, he said from the point that we were receiving the message that he was giving in the 1990s, I believe it was 1995, the potential window would be 2015 to 2025, which is interesting. Now, I don't really think that we're that close because so much has happened since then and so many timelines have shifted and both emphasized this. But I feel that I should share with you that there is a potential, however a little sliver it may be, that we are not through this period yet that he gave us way back in the 1990s. As I'm sharing this with you now, I'm receiving from him to take a look at what has happened between 2015 and potentially 2025. Even if we don't get an ascension in this time period, but that doesn't make this period that he gave us way back in 1995 irrelevant. It is a sensitive period and look how much has happened so far. 
such windows, even if they have to be bypassed for a later time, everything moves up because of shifting frequencies, uh, mass consciousness, and all the many factors that are involved. The period that is given is still fertile ground. It's like it could have happened then, but it didn't. So maybe it really did on another timeline not the one we're in, because we've just gone off with the timeline that's taking us a little further up the river. <laughs> but it did happen, or will happen, before 2025 in another timeline. So what does that really mean? I don't know, actually. <laughs> but my guess is that the potency... All right, just as I started to say that, which I was going to say... South came in and said, yes, the potency. He's stating that it's like a homeopathic remedy. And that little bit of homeopathy, that's a very tiny bit of the whole, creates the modality for the healing process. So, we are in a homeopathic time from 2015 to 2025, even though it looks like we're not having an actual ascension then, we are having a little bit of it <laughs> because it has manifested on a timeline we are no longer connected to. It hasn't abandoned us. It's just moved out of the way because we needed this period of time to receive a little bit of that potion that magic potion, before we can actually create the true form, the true expression in our reality. This concludes the third episode of this series of grids and dynamics. In the fourth episode, we're going to be talking about the tesolectic field. This is a relatively new formation, and I do mean new. It began only a few years ago, and it's very much a part of the whole picture here that we're discussing. Now, I did do a, a, a um, Substack article on it recently, so what I'm going to do is just go over that article and then add to it in this next and, for now, last part of the series. I don't know. There might be other parts in the future. 